Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we've got another gaming mouse to check out today. This one is the Steel Series Rival 700, a very customizable mouse, both in its hardware and software. And we'll be stepping through all of this in a second. I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into the hardware here. The first thing you're going to notice here is this. This is an OLED display. So right now it's displaying the SteelSeries logo, uh, but we can swap this out with other uh, files that you can upload to it. So you can upload these little GIF uh, files and they can uh, handle about 10 frames per second of animation on this little component here. Uh, also, it can pass uh, some game data over to your mouse as well. So certain games support this like Counter-Strike Go and others. Uh, they'll give you some idea of your loadouts or how well you're doing in the game or whatever. I'll show you how to configure all that in a minute. So kind of a gimmicky thing, but kind of nice to have that on a mouse. Another unique feature on this one is that it has some haptic feedback in that uh, you can configure this mouse to uh, give your hand a little vibration uh, when something happens in game. So if you're running low on ammo or it's time to recharge your weapon or whatever, you can uh, set different thresholds for it to fire off the little vibration motor that's built in here. And it goes up and down so it doesn't knock you off uh, track while you're using the mouse. Of course, you can turn that off, but that is an option for you if you'd like to have that. Now, like most gaming mice, it's got some configurable options like the color of the backlight on the logo here, as well as underneath the click wheel. You can also configure all the buttons on here too. So you have uh, two buttons here. You've got another button here next to the display. Uh, these are not buttons. I think it's just part of the design. I, I couldn't find anything that these do, uh, but there are some little orange uh, uh, design elements there. Uh, left and right mouse button over here. You can click the scroll wheel and you have another button here. All of them can be configured, and I'll show you how all that works in a minute. Uh, there are no buttons on this side of the mouse. Now, when we get to the bottom of the mouse, you'll notice that the sensor module here is a module, so you can take it out and replace it. So I guess they have a laser module coming out soon. Uh, this is an optical module. It runs at 100 to 16,000 DPI. Uh, they say it has 50 Gs of acceleration. The polling rate is one millisecond with zero hardware acceleration, so they're promising very little lag with it. You'll also notice here that the cable is is removable. So I can push this button down and pop out the USB cable. It comes with two cables, actually. One is braided, uh, which is about six and a half feet long or two meters. There's also a 3.3 foot cable, a one meter cable that's not braided, so it's a little bit shorter. So they're trying to cover all their bases here. And the price for a gaming mouse isn't all that unreasonable. It's $99 as you see it. And I say not unreasonable as compared to other major brand gaming mice because these are uh, more expensive premium products. It does feel nice in the hand. It has a very good weight to it. It has a very balanced feel to it also. It's very comfortable and I actually might start using this as my regular computer mouse on my uh, Windows PC because it really does feel kind of nice to use in the hand here. And there are a few other customizable options on here also from a hardware standpoint so you can slide off the back uh, casing here and put a different one on. They have a few different options for that. Uh, what I also found kind of interesting is this area here where it says rival. It's a little rubberized uh, plastic thing. You can pull this out and they have a template you can download from their website so you can make your own customized uh, backing for the mouse on a 3D printer. So you have some a lot of really crazy customization on this thing, even beyond just uh, setting up the buttons and the backing on here. You can actually make your own replacement hardware for it, and they give you uh, everything you need for that. Pretty cool stuff. So that's the hardware. Uh, let's get into the software and see how this configures and how it works in a game. Now, if you've used a SteelSeries product, you've probably used their SteelSeries engine software. This is also how you configure the mouse. So you see our rival is showing up on our list of available products, and we're going to click on that. And we've got a pretty robust amount of stuff that we can change here. What's also cool about this is that you can save every setting you're about to see in a profile, which you can do on a per game basis or just uh, uh, as a file that you can load up whenever you want. So you can set up the mouse exactly how you want it for different scenarios and load up that configuration again later. Uh, you can change the color of the logo in the back and you can have it uh, do different things based on maybe when you push the trigger down, it'll change the color temporarily while the button is pushed down. A lot of uh, really uh, crazy customization you can do for both uh, the light on the click wheel as well as the logo in the back. But I'm really impressed with the macro engine on here, and that's what I wanted to show you here. So I'm going to go and configure uh, button B6, which is currently not configured with anything, and that is this button right here by the OLED display. And what we're going to do is configure that button to fire off some text and then push another mouse button after we do that. So I'm going to go over here to macros. By the way, you can set this mouse button to do other stuff, like you could have it launch an application, you can have it uh, push another button on the mouse. So for example, you could have this 
this also work as a right mouse button. You can send media commands, uh, but this is the really crazy one where you can go in and just have it do whatever you want. Uh, so we're going to go over here to open macro editor and we'll pull this up. We're going to start recording here. I'm just going to type out my name and then I'm going to click the right mouse button on the mouse and you can see it got both of those things uh, embedded into this and you can even move things around I think and reconfigure how all this works. I'm going to click on save and uh, then close this out. I'm going to turn on that macro. I'm also going to have the mouse vibrate when I uh, push that button down. So I'll get a strong click on my mouse. It's a haptic feedback. Uh, when that happens, I could set the duration here. I can have it uh, keep uh, playing it until I let, let off the mouse button. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can configure this thing to work. And what I'm going to do now is go over to uh, the Notepad application here. And if I uh, pull up my two up screen here, you're going to see what happens when I push down this button. Uh, so it will hopefully, and I have to save it again here, uh, it'll hopefully uh, display my name uh, as well as hit the right mouse button, which you can see. So I'm, not hit I'm not actually hitting the right mouse button, but because we've configured that in the Mac macro, it prints my name and then clicks the right mouse button. So if you have games that uh, require a whole bunch of crazy things to happen all at the same time or in a row, you can configure the mouse to do that uh, off of one button, which I thought was pretty neat. So that's how the macro feature works. Uh, they also have something cool here too. They have this thing called angle snapping. So I'm going to pull up uh, the paintbrush application here, and I'm really not very good at drawing straight lines with a mouse here. So this is the best I can do uh, trying to draw a straight line. If I go over uh, back to the configuration screen here and set this to uh, the straight angle snapping, it actually tries to guess what I'm doing and uh, helps me draw a much straighter line. So I'm not doing anything different with my mouse here, but uh, just because I set that feature on, uh, it's able to keep my mouse in a much straighter line. So if you have games where you're trying to be very precise and go in a very straight line, uh, this might actually help you. You can see how that works. Uh, you can also set the sensitivity on here too. So if we pull back up our uh, two up screen here and I set the, uh, the initial sensitivity here a little bit higher, uh, little mouse movements make a much bigger deal on screen uh, than uh, when they are set to a lower DPI where uh, you know, larger movements go a little bit less far. And I can set uh, two different sensitivity settings and then uh, right now this button in the, in the uh, top of the mouse here is set to, to toggle between those. There's also something here for acceleration and deceleration where it'll adjust the sensitivity based on how fast your hand is moving. So as you're moving to a point on screen, it can move a little bit faster until you get there and then it will slow down. And again, it's just a ton of stuff that you can do to configure things on here. It's really good. It's really gets kind of crazy. Uh, you can also uh, adjust the polling rate too, to be less sensitive or uh, more sensitive too. So that is pretty cool stuff. Now what I want to do is load up Counter-Strike Go and show you how this display works while you're in the middle of a game. All right, so we got Counter-Strike Go running. This is one of the games that supports the, uh, the display here. So you can see that we're getting uh, some notifications about my weapon here, how many uh, kills I've had in the round here. The other thing that I set the mouse to do is that when my ammo got too low, uh, to ding my uh, mouse so that I'm aware that that's happening. So there are some settings that you can do to do that. Let's take a look and see how you can get that configured. Now the screen is configured in two different ways. Uh, one way, which I'll show you in a minute, is the customization, which is done through the screen we were just on. Uh, but there is another menu for the interactive stuff, and that is done through GameSense. And there's only a few games that are supporting this directly at the moment. So Counter-Strike Go, Dota 2, and Minecraft, if you install a mod, uh, is how you get the screen to interact with your game. Uh, and that's one of the issues here, is that there's really no standard for passing data like this to peripherals. So this is the SteelSeries way of doing it. Every menu manufacturer has their own thing and different games have to support that otherwise or your screen won't work in an interactive fashion. So uh, you can see though that uh, Counter-Strike has a bunch of stuff here already configured and you can add more. So it's got an event that'll fire off when the round ends. It'll loop it uh, forever until the next round starts. So for three, uh, three seconds or so it'll put up the uh, average uh, kills per game it looks like uh, and a few other statistics and it'll also put up a little uh, image of a skull apparently when, uh, when that happens. So you can see all the things that happen happens uh, when those occur on there. Uh, there is also, for example, an ammo warning here. So when the ammo gets down below 50%, it'll display the name of the weapon. And we also did some tactile stuff on here too. So I set a tactile event up uh, to give me a strong click on the mouse when my ammo runs below 12%. Uh, so that's how uh, the interactivity portion works. But if you want to just configure the display uh, with just a different image or something, you can go back to the main uh, screen here, go over to uh, the OLED option. And uh, what I can do, let me pull up my two up screen again, uh, is you can even draw on here and it'll, it'll just put a line on screen here so you can see how all that works. I can also upload an image. They've got this image on their website that I downloaded that really creepily looks like me actually. Um, and you can see how the animation works with that as well. So you do have 
uh, some options for uh, configuring that display. You can have an animation running. You can, again, depending on your game support, you can have it do different things in place, or you can just draw something if you want to do that. So that is the Steel Series Rival 700, and this is a really nice mouse. I mean, all these other crazy features like the screen and the haptic motor aside, uh, it's really useful just on its own. It's got some nice software behind it, very easy to configure. I really like the way these buttons feel. They have a nice response to them and a really decent travel on them, but you can also very quickly uh, fire things off on here too. Uh, I'm not hitting these buttons by accident, which I often do on a lot of these other mice that have way too many buttons on them. So they put the buttons in, a, in the right spot. Uh, so my thumb rest is a thumb rest and the buttons are uh, above. So I have to reach for them to get to them, which for me is a good thing because I'm always hitting buttons by accident on my other mice. So this really feels nice. Uh, they have a lot of ridiculous configuration on here, both from the hardware standpoint uh, as well as in the software. I think they uh, figured that every feature this mouse has needs to have some customization to it. And they have certainly done that here. So if you are very particular about your mouse, uh, you can configure a lot of stuff on here. I don't think there's any uh, weights that you can take off of it, but uh, just about everything you see on here can be changed in some way, shape, or form as you're using it. So they've really thought of a lot of stuff. Uh, the screen and the haptic feedback are, are pretty cool little features. The haptic feedback, I think, is far more useful than the screen is. I mean, the screen is just kind of a gimmicky thing, but I like the fact that you can set the mouse uh, for specific game events to notify you with a little bump uh, that doesn't interrupt your uh, mouse movement, but at least lets you know something's happening on screen that you should be aware of. So if you're not paying attention to your ammo meter or your recharge thing or cool down or whatever it is that you're doing with your uh, game, you can uh, get that feedback on the mouse, which is pretty cool. The one downside, though, is that there really doesn't seem to be a standard for how games deliver this data to peripherals like this one. So everyone's got their own thing that has to get supported somewhere. So you know maybe some company gets with Logitech on one thing and another one gets with uh, Corsair on another. And SteelSeries, of course, has their stuff that uh, works only on their mice. So it'd be nice if there was a standard that everyone could agree on because uh, I think there is some usefulness for having uh, certain data come to your mouse, maybe not through the screen, but certainly through uh, haptics and other things. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.